There we are live. I'm drawn today, buddy. Lovely, miss. We wonderful. Hello. Looking good. Looking good, babe. Me? Yeah, you're looking good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So, how's your day been today? Mm, I feel... I think I feel tired. I have full swings. Okay. Did you take flush niacin? No. Okay. If you have mood swings, you can try to take flush nice and give yourself a nice and flush. And I think you will feel that you calm down if you do that. Also adaptogens. Also adaptogens. You don't take adaptogens now. You don't take adaptogens now. You can start to take it. You can start taking... Uh, Chili, for example, not chili. That's another thing I've been thinking about recently. Uh, ashwagandha, ginseng, arctic root. There's different adaptogens. Today you made a video, right? Yeah, I'm not finished yet. Okay. Do you think you upload it? Tonight or tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. Okay. Mm. All right. You look tired. Yeah, it's hot here. Okay. I'm taking less vitamin C now than I normally do. I'm rationing it. I'm waiting for my new can to arrive from Amazon. I bought another kilo of vitamin C on Amazon. Another one of these. Mm -hmm. It should come within three days. So because I only have a little, I'll take less than I normally do. Yeah. Uh, maybe next time we wait until you have uh, better energy before we do a podcast. I don't feel it's very good if we do podcast when you're tired. Yeah, it's better we do them not at the end of the day when you're tired, but we do them early. When will you sleep? Okay, we'll keep we'll keep it short, maybe to a, an hour at max. Yeah. Yeah. So you upload a cat video to Mike and Wee TV, right? Yeah. All right, so we can promote it here. There will be a video uploaded. Of, what is the video? About cats. About cats. There will be a cat video upload to Mike and Wee TV within 24 hours, more likely than not. So, your family has a form now, right? Mm -hmm. How long have you been uh, using the form? I'm not sure. Okay, three months. Uh, I think he started to... Yeah, maybe three months ago. Okay. And what is it, your father, what is he growing at the farm? Mm, he grows surely and something, I don't know. I, just, I never go to there. Okay. Yeah. You know what we could do if we live in Thailand together? 
I had an idea earlier today. I watched a video about uh, chilies, different type of chilies. And there's a guy who's a chili farmer who uh, cultivated, who created the world's hottest chili, the Carolina Reaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, those rare chilies, you can get some money for them. I thought maybe if I come and live in Thailand with you, we can have grow chilies, like exotic chilies, like rare chilies, not normal chilies. Maybe we can have a chili growing farm in Thailand. Mm, nice. This is the growing some chili up to very spicy for mm -hmm. a number. Yeah, but if we're mm -hmm. gonna do commercial, go. commercial growing, we need to have a grow house with a special lighting and irrigation and things like this. Uh, if we're gonna, you can start at a small scale. Maybe if we have a house and we have a yard, not a yard, we have a plot of land. Maybe there's some chilies that you can grow just out in the sunshine in Thailand. And then the other special chilies maybe had to be more careful with how you grow them, like the Carolina Reaper. I tried to grow a uh, Carolina Reaper over here in Sweden in my kitchen window. It didn't work. It did sprout. The seed sprouted. Um, I got maybe these this high. This the uh, like the the thing with two leaves on it. Uh, then they died. But in Thailand, maybe there's some chilies you can just have outside and then grow. Maybe you don't even need to have a grow house with UV lights or things like this. You can recommend it to your dad. Maybe he can earn good money by growing chilies. Um, I think I will not. Um, I don't know if we move house. Maybe we not do it. Maybe do okay. it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Multiple crop farming versus monocrop farming. Multiple, do you know what multiple means? Multiple means many, several. Many, several. Almost. Yeah. And mono, M-O-N-O, -O, means single, one, alone. Uh, it, it's just one thing. You could say polycrop too. That poly would mean many as well. Poly. Yeah. So you had moon swings today. Okay. Is it uh, the, the time of the month where you have a period and stuff, maybe? Mm, yeah, it's coming, but still not come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like I talked to you about before, if you, if you feel a lot of stress, anxiety, mood swings, you can take flush niacin. You can try flush niacin. Yes. Yeah, I remember one time I was doing a live stream on my cell phone, a cell phone live stream, I was outside. You were watching in the chat, and you wrote, honey, I can't sleep, and you asked for recommendation. I told you to take uh, magnesium, uh, I think vitamin C, and uh, flash niacin, and you took it, and then you wrote, it worked, I feel sleep you I feel tired and then you fall asleep. I use flash niacin if I need rapid stress reduction. My experience for flash niacin, nicotinic acid type niacin is if I take it uh, enough of it to induce a flash, a niacin flash, you will also have a dramatic uh, stress reduction effect. And I will notice the reduction in the stress about the same time as the onset of the uh, Nice and flush. So these two things seem to be uh, connected. What if the nice and flush? I 
I've run out of some supplements. There's some supplements I normally take. The last seven days I've been having more stress than normal. Uh, feeling more nervous, more anxious than normal. I can deal with it. But uh, it's because I ran out of some supplements and I noticed the difference. I have been taking L-theanine for about a week now. I ran out of L-theanine. And uh, after I get my dis disability payment, I'm gonna order some more. l -theanine. Two bottles, maybe. I'll say you need this herbal supplement, how's your condom? It's not the only thing that I do. There's many things that I do to lower stress, to manage stress, to keep stress down. Uh, l theanine is one of them. Adapters also take ashwagandha, ginseng, arctic root. I take maca, uh, magnesium, niacinamide. Uh, pretty much every day I get a niacin flush. Not every day, like 30 days in a row, but a lot of times it's one a day. Sometimes it might be a day or two I don't get an icy flush. I'm, wanting, I'm not wanting to build up my tolerance. Flush niacin, you build up tolerance to it. So if you start taking flush niacin and you want an icy flush, starting out, if you take uh, 50 milligrams of nicotinic acid, aka flush type niacin, that can be enough to induce a niacin flush. Uh, if you do that every day for, it can be a week, two weeks, uh, you will stop flushing that amount. You will have to up the dose to uh, around twice as much. A lot of times you will get a nice and flush. That's how it started with me. I used to use it when I was still suffering from panic attacks before I killed my panic attacks. That's another thing I killed myself using supplements. Supplements, I call it God's medicine because God made herbs, God made vitamins. And a lot of these things have medicinal uh, properties and that's uh, censored and hidden by the system, the satanic system. It's hidden. They don't want people to know that. They want them to be uh, looking to the system. Um, but I cure my panic attacks just like I cure my own depression. I used to be on SRI drugs, give back, antidepressants, quit them, and uh, switch to uh, natural stuff. Uh, back when I would still have panic attacks, that's another mental health issue that I cured myself. Uh, panic attacks. You said so high levels of stress, PTSD, and uh, anxiety that I would hit. Like, I would get panic attacks uh, at least one a month. And uh, before I had optimized my uh, supplement regime and got it to the point where it never gets high enough to where ooh, I really need to load the stress. ASAP right now because it's super high, like extremely high, like level 9 out of 10, where panic attacks happen, like level 8, 9, upwards, out of 10. If you have a scale, 0 to 10 stress, panic attacks manifest in the 7, 8, above 7. And uh, one of the things I noticed was, before I started taking all, five I minutes, mean, I needed to find out this is how much of this, just adding one thing after the other, adding another supplement, another supplement, and uh, started taking niacinamide and then working up, titrating to effect, figuring out how much I need of niacinamide to keep the stress down together with the other things that I'm taking. Different, you have to find the right levels. Um, I've lowered my stress, anxiety and stress, cortisol, adrenaline, to the point where it never gets high enough to where it's like panic attack territory, stress, where panic attacks happen. Uh, meaning, in my experience, I would at 0 to 10 stress level, I would notice that the panic attacks only manifest above like 7 out of 10 and above on the stress scale, Mike's stress scale, MSS. Um, and now I keep the stress down so it doesn't get high enough where it gets into the territory where panic attacks manifest anymore. But before I optimize my supplement uh, protocol to the point where I don't need like rapid reduction, like right now this is a problem, um, I would rely on nicotinic acid flush niacin. Uh, and my experience with that is it will kill panic attacks in the tracks. I mean, if I sort of feel like I would feel like when a panic attack was coming on, I meaning you feel like this increasing level of stress it gets higher and higher, peaking, 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 and eventually a panic attack will manifest. And it's not that I'm seeing I think about the world that's gonna to come to an end, it's like worrying about things. Uh, 
but it's uh, if you understand psychology and anxiety, it can be a physical problem where your body suddenly releases a surge of these chemicals into your body. Maybe not chemicals, might not be the right word, but like adrenaline, cortisol, and it can be a sudden onset, like a surge, like I don't know, out of the blue, boom, and and uh, it hits like a wave. People that have had uh, uh, anxiety problems, serious enough, know what I'm talking about. People that have PTSD, you see PTSD, it can be, I don't know, it's, it doesn't have to be, you see, they think about, oh, the, the, the world is going to end or something like this. It can be, you're just feeling stressed without thinking about anything stressful. You're just having, in the stress state, and they can get high and high, and suddenly you're in the state where your body is having like a panic attack. Um, so what I would rely on before I optimize my supplement protocol to uh, fight panic attacks would be if I felt sort of feel like I'm getting, oh, this is how I feel like before a panic attack happens, being self-aware, introspective. Um, if I took enough flush niacin to give myself a niacin flush, right about the time that I would feel like the niacin flush effect, it would be like, oh, it's like at least 50% calmer than before I took the nice and it will, it will be kill the panic attacks in, it, in its tracks, stop it. So for initially, uh, I started to use nicotine gas to flash nice and I was relying on that to be like, okay, if I start feeling that, take it and quickly reduce my stress. Uh, now, like I said, I've optimized my protocol, so I, I don't get into those highlights of stress. Like the baseline, day-to-day -day baseline of my stress levels now are a lot lower than it used to be. It used to be when I had the raging PTSD, and uh, all the other issues like anxiety and super high stress and depression and stuff. Maybe I wake up in the morning super stressed and anxious and feeling nervous, like crawling out of my skin and anxiety. And then it would stay too high. And it would, never, it would be like from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed at times, it would be like feeling stressed. And then sometimes it would be get a lot higher. And then if it gets high enough, there would be panic attacks manifesting. Where you just start like hyperventilating and you start feeling really weird and maybe dizzy and things like this. Uh, like a panicked feeling. Uh, I cure that. I can say cure because it's not improvement. If I, if it was like this, like before the panic attacks used to happen on a monthly basis, at least once a month, and now it's been more than six months, I didn't have one panic attack. So it's not like, well, now it's every other month or something. That would be improvement. No, it's a cure. Used to have this problem, the problem is gone now 100%. That's a cure. Um, okay, so the, nothing I've said in this live stream is to be taken as medical advice or information. I'm just sharing my personal belief and opinions and thoughts about things. What I do, what I've been doing, how I think and feel about things. I'm not a doctor if you've got a health problem, mental or physical. Mental or otherwise, consult a licensed physician. Okay. They know what to do. Okay, they know what to do. They 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 the they, the best. They they are the best. The licensed physicians are the best. Now maybe I was just unlucky that my depression was secure. Go to licensed physicians, and my panic attacks, my depression, and PTSD, and all these other things. And it wasn't until I started doctoring myself to better health uh, that I got improvement different things um, that, that could, could be like the off the, the off relocation okay see a lot of people need to have some kind of drug in them to feel happy I, I feel happy I'm not depressed I don't drink alcohol I don't do drugs the only drugs I do are uh, nicotine and caffeine. I don't drink alcohol, I don't do drugs. A lot of people today in society, uh, they need some kind of drug in them to be feel happy. They don't have like happiness. A lot of people are miserable. And they, um, they, they need some kind of a drug in them, alcohol or big pharma drug, to, to, to feel okay. And if they're not having some kind of drug in them, they feel miserable. That's a sad state of humanity.
and a big part of why people turn to that. Why is that the case? Because people live unfulfilling lives. They're not. They're mentally and physically unwell. Their body is starved of nutrients and vitamins. And if you get low enough of certain vitamins in your body, niacinamide, for example, if your niacin levels, if you get enough of niacin deficiency, you might have depression manifesting. You might have anxiety manifesting, schizophrenia manifesting. Um, if your niacin levels get low enough and stay low enough. So a part of the uh, the problem with people having uh, like being miserable a lot of time and turning to alcohol and, and drugs, if it's street drugs or big pharma drugs, is they're not happy. And why are they not happy? Well, it's physical. Part of it, how I see it, part of it is societal. I Meaning the way society is set up, living in a big city, like the, the way that the world has become, that the, the world is so toxic and unnatural that people wake up in the morning, go to jobs that they hate, and they do something that they hate doing for eight hours every day. Then they come home and they're exhausted. And then when they eat, they eat sugar and junk food. They don't take vitamins. Okay. Uh, so basically, society is God created human beings. So your your dad is more natural life. I mean, he's got a farm over there. He's gonna be growing stuff, be out in the sun, doing stuff, and growing crops and plants, watering it, and spending time with family and stuff like this. Now, if you would be put him in in a cubicle, in in this big city, and he has to sit in in a little cubicle on a computer all the time and, and like whatever doing something he doesn't like doing now he, he wouldn't be as happy see um, so part of it is the world is set up in a place to make people like in the, keep them in the rat race or whatever it's called hamster wheel rat maze the rat race rat maze that the masons that control society has set up for people to uh, run around it. Uh, so part of why people are unhappy is they put, I, I divide into two. Physical, meaning they have too little niacin, they have too little vitamin C, too much sugar in the body, um, eating inflammatory stuff, they're not doing things slow inflammation, they do have inflammation. I've talked about how there's a connection between neuroinflammation and mental health. So uh, part of what I did to improve my mental health, see relief in depression and PTSD and things like this, anxiety is start lowering inflammation in my body. Cutting out things like sugar that give you inflammation. And uh, start taking a lot of things to lower inflammation. So basically, in brief, summarizing this, let us therefore get the conclusion of the matter. Uh, the world is toxic and evil, and people are mentally, physically unhealthy. They have deficiencies of certain vitamins and nutrients. They get too much of certain things and too little of other things. It's like a physical thing. Um, that's part of it. And also the world is set up. But the modern world is unnatural. Human beings are not supposed to live like that. And uh, everything else. Also because of sin. Sin makes more miserable. Meaning the world is of, of Satan. It's, it's satanic. And... Uh, the world is promoting loose sex and pornography and uh, getting drunk and doing drugs and whatever, like immoral behavior. And sins hurt you. The, the trick of the sin nature is to make you feel like sinning is winning. Sinning ain't winning. Okay. Where a lot of times the sin will short term make you feel good. And long term it will make you feel bad. Meaning sin will corrupt you. It will decay you. It will destroy you. Um, so if you're living a life that's unnatural that God didn't make you God made you a human body with the reward centers and the dopamine and the serotonin and everything else the, your body controls like you're happy if you're happy, unhappy stressed, having anxiety or not and it's like set up in, God has programmed this so God has set it up to you're going to get reward from, from normal things, natural it's like you do this and you get a reward if you're happy about it, if you do this it makes you feel bad um, 
so if, if we will go back to more natural way of life people will be happier okay come back baby now you look happy and a little bit more lively you perked up there you caught a second win there you are babe no yeah. Uh huh. But you look happy and more energetic now. Maybe my uh, monologue invigorated you. It's a morale boosting speech to rally the troops. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so. How much niacin am I do you take now? How much do you take today? Did you take niacin today? Mm, that's one. Hmm? One, okay, so that's what, 250, 500 milligrams? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't cut. I, I think it's 500. Yeah, I think it's 500. Yeah, I think it's 500. Honey, I'll be right back. I gotta refill my vitamin C water. I'll make it as a concentrate on top of our water. I'll be right back. It's also okay to not be happy. You don't have to be happy all the time. It, it, it's, uh, it's okay to feel like crap sometimes. That's also okay. Um, the purpose of life is not to feel happy. Now happiness can ensue as a byproduct of uh, doing the right things, but happiness in and of itself should not be uh, the primary motivator. Like the pursuit of happiness, happiness in the sense of the emotional state, not uh, like uh, livestock and gold bars and things like this. You have a fan there. No, it's a no, it's a cat. Dog. Okay, yeah. I thought you were fanning yourself. Okay. All right. You mentioned earlier that uh, you were feeling hot. It was hot there. And then I saw this uh, waving motion sign. I assumed. I assumed that it was a, a some kind of fan. You were fanning yourself. Okay. I will put a link in the description. I will put a link in the description to uh, Mike and Wee TV. And we will upload a video there with her cats within, more likely than not, within 24 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One story. <laughs> Have one eye. Uh, there's a Bible verse about sorrow makes the heart better. I'm paraphrasing. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a Bible verse. Sorrow makes the heart better. Sorrow makes it the heart better, something like this. There's also a verse about it's better to be in the house of mourning than in the house of uh, mirth or something. I'll be like back then. Okay. So the, the biblical uh, truth is contrary to the. Uh, status quo mainline mainstream thinking of the world not surprisingly because Satan is the god of this world and the whole world lies in wickedness it 
everything is upside down in this world. Well, not everything. Not everything, but a lot of things. Mike, pull that up. Pull it up. Pull it up, Mike. We'll pull it up. Bible Gateway, Ecclesiastes 7. Okay, yeah. Ecclesiastes, I had to use Google. Bible Gateway search function is not good. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 7, 3. Here we go. Ecclesiastes 7, 3. Authorized King James Version. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness, sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. That's the verse I was thinking about. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Yeah, sorrow doesn't have to mean like you have something super bad happen, like you uh, lose a loved one or something like this. Or all your money or whatever we can talk to about depression it can apply to even stuff like somebody being depressed or feeling sad feeling sad about something it doesn't have to be something super big uh the, the bible says that makes the heart better Hi. welcome back babe Welcome back, babe. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. That's very cute. Can you show him again? Hello. You're on the big screen. <laughs> I must decrease and you must increase. Okay. Uz. Uz, yeah. I named this cat. That's <laughs> so cute. <laughs> <laughs> you look at me. Mm -hmm. You look at me. Yes. It's so it's so relaxed. It's like it's it's uh, it's completely submitted to you. It's it's uh, it's complete. <laughs> it's 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 uh. Maybe not severe, but it's it's like very just. Let let go. It's it's completely just relaxed. <laughs> it looks curious. It look it's looking around. That's a beautiful cat. My favorite cat that you have is Cross, but you, you don't know this, uh, 
Us might might take the uh, number one spot. You never know. Yeah. He's a he's a contender for the favorite Mike's favorite cat. Tyro. Yeah. Has. Cross is my favorite cat of yours. Is he looking at me? No, he looks at me. Okay. And so, yeah. Oh. Looks curious. Yes. In a way, you could say that I'm his daddy in a way, because I named him, and typically it's the father and mother who names the, the cats. So in a sense, I'm mm -hmm. like his father because I named him. I like your outfit today. I told her that before, I told me that before when we were talking on video call. And I saw her outfit. It's cute. Thank It looks like a 50s, 60s era. It looks yes. like 50s, yeah, like 50s style, 60s style clothing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's, um, yes, they make you, uh, what is it called? Um, they new design. Uh, it still look like that, but mm -hmm. it's look. <laughs> Why you show me only? Okay, hold on, back. I will move you from solo layout. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Which, pro which profile picture? Which which profile picture do you like best? 
this one or this one? before this one you like this more yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah what about this one it might look a little bit too aggressive maybe for some mm. people yeah it's not bad but I like that one more I also have this the, I'm going through the uh, aud audio avatars that I have in the library different pictures I have that is the profile picture this is a cross and I put down salvation verses on it. Rom it says R O M three two three uh line two eight and then on the uh horizontal uh strip of tape it says uh, one core fifteen three to four. No, one core fifteen one to four. I glanced over at it and I saw it says one to four, not three to four. I also have this Relation 2015 Romans 3 turns 3 to 8 1 core oh, 50 3 to 4 like cool. Okay <laughs> Yeah, they're not poorly trained yet They're still young I was working on uh, setting up a website yesterday, site.google website, and uh, it, it, it looks like it's it's not too advanced, but I, I got uh, I got bored with it, tinkering with it. I was tinkering with it for for maybe thirty minutes, around thirty minutes, and then I wasn't happy with it, so I deleted it, and I, I'll do another try at it. Not a time I want to get it the way I like it. It's like the my new show it. When you put put the uh, website name, the font was in white, and I didn't like that. I want it to be another color. I'm gonna have a website because uh, with the way the censorship works on YouTube. I've got an, I have uh, strikes on the my Sar channel, so that might go down. I want to make sure that my information lives on, like choice content. Maybe I can't mirror like all the possibly thousands of hours of live streams and videos I have on, on all my channels. There's some content that's unique to my Sar 2.0, some content that's unique to my Sar, uh, the my Sar channel. Uh, we, I'm live on two channels right now, Mike Sar, Mike Sar 2.0. So if you're not subscribed, if you're watching this on Mike Sar, the Mike Saha channel. Make sure you subscribe to Mike Saha 2.0 if you don't want to miss out on my future uploads on YouTube. Because it's not impossible that the Mike Saha channel will disappear. And then I will be live streaming on the Mike Saha 2.0 or 3.0 channel. And you won't know about it. It's just the channel will disappear. The main channel. So if you want to make sure that you uh, get the content, future content, you want to make sure you subscribe to the uh, 2 pro channel and ultimately the 3 pro channel as well. But that's not foolproof. I mean, if the government succeeds in taking me out, they tried before. I'm a total individual government gang and they tried to take me out before different ways. Uh, there's been plenty of attempts to take me out, just didn't work. So far. Uh, knock on wood. Um, as they say but yeah it, it's not impossible that uh, I mean if, if they take back if I die and maybe my channel stays up for like a month and then I, maybe they change the terms of service on YouTube there's like now something is not allowed anymore that was allowed when I was still alive and having a YouTube channel and since I'm not allowed to, to uh, manage the channel it might go down after that and then my videos are gone so it's a good idea for me to get a website. Uh, Chuck Langenberg, told me to Chuck Langenberg, he was murdered by the program, I believe, suicided. They put him in a psych ward and suicided him. Is that is what I believe that they did to Chuck Langenberg. Chuck Langenberg is the man uh, 
who is the author of the website sites.google.exposegangstalker.com that I link to a lot of times in my video descriptions and sometimes I uh, uh, copy paste information from it in the description sometimes I screen share it um, he was the guy who uh, made that site he was a total dude like me and I, he is the only the one person from all my years of being a total individual being active online he's the only person who I believe for sure was a total video, a real total video. Uh, fake total videos outnumber real TIs to at least a hundred at least a hundred to one. Meaning if you search like total video gangs off on YouTube, even without considering if they're hiding real TIs from it, they are shadow banned. But if you would not have manipulated search results like controlled that YouTube post would not gonna show this channel. Um, if you would search total video gang stalking you might have to go to page 10 or 100 before we talk the initial stuff and, and look at all the videos and you won't be able to tell as an outsider uh, who's real and who's not most of the time unless you have uh, the discernment of a Christian walk after spirit that is well learned and all the things like this I'm not saying it's impossible but Yeah, so I got a website and uh, I have the Mike Sad 2.0 channel. So subscribe to Mike Sad 2.0 if you're watching this on the Mike Sad channel. In, in case you want, if you don't want to miss out on my future great content, I have a lot of great content and more likely than not, it's going to be more great content. Even this, I consider this to be great content. Um, this is a very relevant topic, Kevin. The gospel has been preached. That's more valuable than anything else. I don't know what we did. She might have gone to the bathroom or something. It's nineteen oh four in Sweden. I checked my uh, text and the Amazon Airb home delivery is expected to arrive within 12 hours. I'm gonna get another kilo of vitamin C, I've been rationing this. And they could leave, uh, you can leave messages to the driver and things like this. So, the world is toxic by design, and most people are sleeping in the matrix. Most people don't even try to wake them up because they're not ready. 
one of the scenes in the Matrix movie is where uh, Morpheus is talking to uh, Neo and he's talking about how most people are not ready to be unplugged. I made a decode on that movie revealing the hidden Christian doctrinal truths encoded into the Matrix movie. I'm a decoder. A decoder things. Come back, Annie. Welcome back, Ben. A uh, brief summarization of some of the things I mentioned in the uh, previous one. I did a live decode from my memory of the Neo Dematrix movie. First of all, Hi. so. So, so what? So what I'm saying is this. I'll give you the uh, the brief. Neo is a Christian, and Neo is somebody that has become a Christian because if you become a Christian, you stay a Christian. There's a heretic called more rich in the teaching you can lose your salvation. That's, that's a satanic. I'm gonna lower your microphone a little bit. It's too loud. No, no, you don't have to mute yourself. I can, I can load the volume. Yeah, so Neo is a Christian. That's a decode of Neo in the Matrix movie. Neo is a Christian. The word Neo means new. Okay. Like Neo feudalism, Neo Nazism, Neo Confederate, Neo liberal. Okay, the word Neo means new the bible teaches if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away all things have become new i think the verse goes therefore therefore if any man be in christ he's a new creature new a new creature meaning neo represents a Christian who is in the world but not of it. Um, who is he to overcome the world but he to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I think the verse goes. He overcomes the world. There's a lot of attempts by the Matrix agents to shut him down. Mirroring my life experience so far. I'm not saying I'm immortal. If God goes, if, if my work down here is done, soon our work is done all of us one by one still we live our lives it's funny it's if all this stuff survives okay this is a song by metafix big city life so we're tying up going full circle what i talked about earlier how the big city life is unnatural don't let the system get you down let's put the lyrics uh anyway uh a christian is somebody who's in the world but not of it so it's not you become a Christian, boom, you're instant raptured up into heaven. Like the rapture, there is a rapture, but it's not like when a person gets saved, what happens is they disappear and then they're in heaven. The same moment they become a Christian. No, they walk around in the world, but not of the world. They are the world. They speak of the world. The world hears them. You're of God, little children, I have overcome them. For great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's many verses about the world and how a Christian has overcome the world and how it's possible to overcome. The word overcome comes back to triumph in combat, victory, to overcome. He was overcome by a large number of assailants. That would mean they got the best of you. They beat you, okay? Who is he that overcometh the world? The world. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. What is Neo Dimension? Of course, it's a Hollywood movie. Uh, it's a production company or whatever, the film studio of Warner Brothers. They're not selling this as a sermon by a pastor. This is a movie that's made to be have mass appeal. If, they, if it would be like a sermon and it's me explaining these things, it wouldn't sell that much. It, but they have the action effects and everything is 
it's like the theme is magnified. It's like it's upscale, meaning the way that you overcome the world is not that you every person becomes a Christian can dodge bullets and, and do like triple somersaults and uh, run on walls and stuff like this. But that's Neo has been given the ability to overcome the world and the agents of the matrix system, the system world, the world system. And the world is a system of lies. So what I see in that movie, and I am likely to believe, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that it's advertent more than it's inadvertent. I mean, you could go, well, they're tapped into some kind of creative flow and there's some like universal truths that, that came out and the, the, the source of the, the core level of the truth is what Mike is talking about. No, I, this is, I think it's on purpose, all these things. I mean, they read it in their own purpose. And like the deepest of the decode of the matrix is the Christian. Meaning Neo represents a Christian. He has woken up on the matrix. What does the Bible teach about Christians? That in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Okay. They said any time the glorious light of the gospel should shine in unto them. And convert and heal. So it's a paraphrase. Sometimes my quoting ability is better than other times. It's a, it's a better than most people. I know the Bible better than most pastors I see on YouTube, by the way. Okay. The reason I say this is because sometimes idiots come and say, this guy, they know they're trying to push my buttons. Ed knows the Bible better than you. That's a lie. Okay. It's self-evident, not about better than that. I can teach about commentary books. Notice how I have an empty bookshelf here, not full commentary books. Got 66 books in here, though. Here's the point. Um, not it. Well, in a sense. Okay, here we go. Um, Neo the Matrix. He's a new man, Neo, and make of himself, of, and making of himself of twain one new man, one new man. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature, new creature. So the Bible teaches a Christian. You can say a new creature. The word Neo means new. Now notice how I'm like Neo the Matrix because part of, I'm seeing these codes in things and I can see what the code says. There's hidden codes, there's coded information in things. I can see the code, I can recognize the code and I can see what the code says, decipher it, decode it. People that are asleep in the Matrix, they have all this code in front of them their whole lives but they can't see it. It's a reality construct, the Matrix. They look at news media reports and they don't see the codes. They look at the Matrix movie, the old way movie, the Die Hard movies, and they don't see the code there as I can. And then decode it and can say what it says. Who is in the Matrix? A guy who, after he wakes up, now he can see the code. He looks at a computer screen and there's like green letters coming down, and other people can see the code. But Neo can see, re see the code and read what the code says. There's two agents, and if you look at it, there's like a scene, and there's something going on. And the people that are woken up on the matrix, they look at a computer screen, there's green, green digits scrolling over the screen, raining down the screen. And then to you, as the viewer, at some point in time, one of the scenes, look at the movie, you just see these green things, but they could, like, I, there's two agents moving over here or something like this. So they can see the code, and they can see what, they can decode it. And then there's a scene uh, towards the end, where, uh, spoiler alert, where the, he's like fighting, facing off with agents in a hallway. And uh, then he, in in his real life, he's seeing like the code, I guess. Like he's seeing the code. I, I, this has been a long time since I watched it, I don't remember now. But yeah, so Neon the Matrix represents a Christian. And the Bible teaches that you're blind in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So unbelievers are permanently blind, they're permablind, permafrost, they're permablind. Christians have been enabled to not be blind spiritually and have a spiritual 
gift of discernment. Every Christian has the supernatural gift of discernment. Not maybe not the actual gift to the fullest extent, but if you have the Holy Spirit of truth inside of you, you're a child of God, you have God send you information into your mind and opening up your understanding to things and showing you things that he wants you to understand. So need the matrix Christian uh, he wakes up and notice how in the beginning confirm my theory my hypo it's not in I, it is what it is this is what is going on in the beginning of the movie when he's not a Christian he's uh, seeking he's looking okay for something he's seeking meaning and uh, he gets uh, right at the beginning of his waking up before he gets called uh, Neo I think Mr. Anderson was what it was called before, not Neo. Before it becomes Neo, he's approached by Trinity. What does the Bible teach? That the Godhead is a Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So but right at his awakening, like when he's waking up by the Matrix, he gets contacted. Trinity draws nine unto him. He draws nigh unto something and the Trinity draws nigh unto him. He gets caught for the white rabbit. He goes to the night country. The Trinity shows up early on in his beginning. I think it's before he's actually woken up that he encounters Trinity in the movie. He wakes up by the Matrix. Now he can see things he couldn't see before. He sees reality as it really is. He has that ability now to see the world as it truly is. Not the facade, the illusion, the fake reality construct, the facade, the uh, the curtain in front of the Wizard of Oz, Illuminati, controlling the scenes, controlling the world from behind the scenes. And it, it, you'll be like the curtain closes and there's like these pictures on there. It's like, this is what the world is like. Look at this Trump, this politician, this politician, this is how the world operates and it's like fake. And then behind the scenes you got the Wizard of Oz, which is, it will be a single representation of the entire Illuminati, what do you want to call them? The Cabal, the Deep State, the Satanists, what do you want to call them? So, uh, Neo represents a Christian. Maybe I can dig up the live stream I did a, a decode of this live I can do right now from memory and I think it might be a better clue. Strangers and pre pilgrims, come out from among them and be ye separate and I will receive you, saith the Lord. Meaning they live uh, they have withdrawn themselves from the world, see. They, they have withdrawn themselves. The, the Christians, the Nebuchadnezzar, Sion, too. They, say they have a place called Sion as well in the movie. Which, if you're a Christian, you know that it has Christian meaning as well. Uh, they have withdrawn themselves from the world, meaning they're not, they're living together, they're not out in the world. They have come out from among the world, and they are separate from the world. And you can see also the teachings about the Christian walk in there, meaning after you're a Christian, after you've woken up, your own flesh will work, work to the world, the flesh, Satan. The world, your, the flesh, Satan, the devil, will try to get you back in, will pull you back in. Meaning, when you become a Christian, you can walk after the Spirit. You have been empowered with supernatural abilities, like the ability to pray to God and have God answer your prayers. Lost people, God is not waiting on the prayers. 
like he does to his children. Sometimes fools will say, we're all children of God. No, we're not all children of God. The Bible teaches that lost people are children of Satan. That's what you are if you're not a Christian, you're a child of Satan. The prince of the power of the world. No, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the child of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air is referring to Satan. And he's a, he's a spirit that operates with it, that exercises influence over within unbelievers. Um, here, here's another thing that I see in there. If I would, uh, maybe I, in the future, do like a solo video on this and be more professional, more, more professional, quote unquote. Um, who knows? I feel like this is worth talking about. Um, another thing that I see there is the flesh. What is your flesh about? Sensory gratification, feeling wanting to feel good all the time. How your flesh tempts you. It's like, do this thing. It makes you feel good for a moment. Watch porn. I stop watching porn. But give me watch, stop, watch porn. Do drugs. Get drunk. And it's something that is like, it's something you do to make you feel good. So the flesh is tempting you by something that's gonna make you feel good. Most of the time. Short term. And then long term, it will make you feel real bad. Eat sugar. Sugar is, is a drug, actually, it gives you like a rush, a high. A lot of people addict to sugar. Um, And after they wake up and uh, escape the matrix, wake up out of the matrix and live on this uh, ship, it might be called Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, maybe not, but in a certain place. And then everything is kind of boring and dull now, after they become Christians. Meaning they're eating some kind of porridge or some kind of like gray, boring, like soup that looks very distasteful or like bland, like it doesn't taste anything maybe. And what I see in there is hidden quotes about like how a Christian after they get saved, God is, now you're as a person who God is constantly working to get you to be like, don't keep living to do what makes you feel good for a moment all the time, which is how a carnal lost person is. Sense of gratification. Like I talked about tying up loose ends from the beginning, coming full circle, beginning of the live stream, that the goal of life is not to feel good all the time. Now there is spiritual happiness. I mean, the Bible teaches that a Christian, the fruits of the Spirit are love, peace, joy, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, meekness. The fruits of the Spirit, uh, joy is in there for sure. I'm paraphrasing. Joy is in there for sure. Joy. Okay. Which is, you have the ability for a Christian to have a joy that is not based on the physical. Where if another person would have been your shoes, they wouldn't be feeling good. They wouldn't be happy or have joy. Meaning the flesh is like, I need to put some drug in my body, or eat sugar, or get drunk, or go out and fornicate, or something like this to feel good. Lost people are empty and have a void inside themselves. They're trying to fill that void. Uh, and the, the mature, the more mature perspective, as you mature as a Christian, God is drawing you to be more and more doing the thing that he wants you to do and living the right way, rather than living to please your flesh. Being a lover of pleasure is more than a lover of God, which everybody is before they become a Christian. You don't, you're not able to be a love of God to any extent before you're a Christian. Um, even a Christian can fall into the flesh and be uh, momentarily a lover of pleasure is more than a love of God. Anytime you sin, you show that you're a lover of uh, a certain sin more than you love God. Because if you love God enough, you wouldn't be doing things that he hates. Even petty sins, 
what, what you might think of petty sins. This is really no petty sins. There seems to be some kind of a greed pattern there under the cat. Is that a carpet, babe? She's muted. The uh, cat furthest away from the camera is the mother of the kittens. That's a mother cat. Mm -hmm. When she lies down like that, it's dinner time. I Meaning she lays down like that so they can access her uh, milk containers if they're hungry. Anyway, uh, so basically. There's a flesh and a spirit, and the flesh is lusting to do things for, for instant gratification, short term, feel good. That's the flesh. I have the sin nature myself, so I, by experience and studying the Bible, I know this to be true. Um, meaning, the sin, the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so, that, so you cannot do the things that you would. So you're your flesh is lusting to do things to fulfill the, the desires thereof. Short term gratification, watching porn makes you feel good for the moment. Or uh, doing drugs. And later on you will pay for it. Eating sugar. And then you'll be depressed because you eat sugar. You get depressed. You, you have more anxiety and stress if you eat sugar. Uh, but short term, I know this from my sheep periods too. When I used to take sheep periods, Rarely. I mean, I've quit sugar. I'm not addicted to sugar anymore, like most people are. But 2022, 2023, I've done sugar free 2023. So far, so good. No sheet periods, no sheet meals. No, like I take a weekend, eat some sugary stuff, give myself a weekend, and then off it again. I would do that at 2022, where I would uh, kick the sugar addiction. And if I say sugar addiction, that doesn't mean I'm some kind of weird or also. It's addicted. Everybody who eats sugar every day, consumes sugar above 10 grams, should not be surprised if they have a dependency upon the substance sugar. I mean, if they would discontinue the administration or route of sugar, they would experience discontinuation symptoms, aka withdrawal. Okay. Um, so here's the point. I see that where they're, they're teaching at a very deep level about after the person becomes Christian, now they're living a life that's not based on gratifying the desires of the flesh. And one guy who has woken up out of matrix decides to go back, to draw back onto perdition. He wants to draw back, go back to Egypt. Okay. And that hidden there is the Jews exodus from Egypt where the Jews as they were going to the promised land they were in the desert and they were not having like all the food that they had in Egypt okay they provoked Moses Moses didn't like it they, he, Moses led them to the wilderness and they started complaining about when we were in Egypt we had this food and that food that's they, they were that was their focus and go through the desert they didn't have uh, like these feasts or whatever like they, they were missing some food and stuff so the hidden teaching in there is about the uh, two natures of a Christian and how before you're a Christian you can only you're, you're only in the flesh, flesh. You, you're locked oh. into the flesh you, you can't walk up the spirit you can't be used by God like a Christian can that you don't you're spiritually dead before you before you're a Christian and before you're a Christian, your life is only about being in the flesh. And after you become a Christian, God will start working on you to get you to stop living like you used to live. For example, me personally, before I became a Christian, I would be watching porn as a young man. And after I became a Christian, God started working on me to stop doing this. 
and I eventually overcome it, stop doing it. I haven't done it for months, months, months. There's more than a lot of you people that call yourself Christian out there can say. Even people that are older than me, they should be more mature as Christians than I am. Uh, a lot of you out there fall into the scene of, of porn fornication on a weekly basis. And you call yourself Christians. Anyway. So, the Jews, when they left Egypt, they were led by Moses through the wilderness, Exodus. And they started whining, because we had it better in Egypt, before we left Egypt, before we wake up out of Matrix. See, and we guided by Morpheus. We had it better in Egypt. Mo I mean, Moses. We had it better in Egypt. And they, they talk about the food or something like this. We had this, we had that in Egypt. There's a guy in the Matrix, like the bald guy, who uh, he's, he, he becomes like an, an agent. He uh, deserts and he wants to go back into the Matrix. And there's a scene where he wants to eat a steak at a restaurant. And he talks about the sense of pleasures. Or like, yeah, I know it's fake, but enjoying this. Uh, okay. That's a hidden reference to Exodus. That's a hidden reference to Exodus. And Exodus, how God dealt with the Jews. But to them, though, without all these things done with parables. And I take pleasure in order, even if I take labor to explain this to people. Of these things, I have many things to say and hard to be added, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. But I take pleasure in order, even if I give my all to explain these things to people. Most people are not going to be able to receive the value of what I'm saying. The people who don't deserve it to understand these things. They will not understand it. Uh, but anyway, my job is to speak the truth. People's job is to believe the truth. Uh, And after they uh, wake up out of Matrix, live on this ship, spaceship, whatever, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. They have like boring food now. Plain, kind of plain food. I guess that would be symbolizing the manna that God rained down from heaven once a day. They were eating all mad, the Jews, I think. And just like the character in the movie who symbolizes a Christian, they're all Christians. Neo, Trinity, Morpheus, these people. I don't know if it's called Cyrax or if it's called the guy who uh, deserted, wanted to desert, jump ship. He represents the Jews in the wilderness that after they had been delivered from the bondage of Egypt, they had uh, taskmasters, they set, out the, set over them Taskmasters that afflicted them with hard bondage. I think it says hard labor. And, uh, but they had some things, like the food or whatever it was. He symbolizes the Jews in Exodus. They were, I want to go back to Egypt. In Egypt, we had food. Okay, that's the guy who's like, I want to eat the steak. This is in the Matrix. I want to eat the steak. I know it's fake, but I want to eat the steak. As a Christian, it's not like the sinless perfectionism is a heresy. I mean, you saw people teach that if you're a Christian, you stop sinning. That's insane. That's one of the craziest, ridiculous heresies out there. You have to be so self delusional to trick yourself into believing you stopped sinning. That people will reach a state of sinless perfectionism and they're not sinning anymore, stuff like this. Now, in a sense, th that's true because it's a verse about now it is therefore no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. I think the verse goes, the passage goes along those lines. Slew me, and by it slew me. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I praise the Lord Jesus Christ 
Or something like this. I praise God. Something like this. So, basically, the Matrix movie is. I'm not gonna give you. It's gonna be a cliffhanger. You're gonna have to tune into future videos. Uh, and if I'm still alive, I'm not allowed to make to mention this again. Talk about this again sometime. Decoding the Matrix movie. To the core, the deepest level. What is that bottle there? I'm interested in the background. What is that bottle there? What is that bottle there, babe? To the right. Uh, one. To the right. To the right. This. Yeah. This. Yeah. Uh, for uh, to where food catch is uh, yeah. almost I just keep it because it it's cute. Yeah, not that one. The one to the uh, that side. This one. The bottle in the yes. corner, the right, the yes. right corner. Yeah, then, oh, yeah. Okay, there. It's in the left now. Oh, that one. What's that? It is this box. Yeah, but the hey, bottle. Um, What's the bottle? Did you just move? Um, bottle for to my shop. <laughs> okay, is it vitamins or is it cat food pellets? It's no, it's oh, a no, no. The bottle. The bottle. The bottle. Not the box. Oh, the bottle. This one? Yeah. This one? Oh. Yeah. It's a for the back. Is it vitamins or pellets Pet. food? Oh, no. It's snack. Okay, snack. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I was interested. I get interested about things. <laughs> okay. Is that a bunk bed? No, it's a shelf. It's a it's a storage. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, the Matrix movie, it's uh, has a lot of hidden truth in there. I don't believe it, it's there on purpose. It's uh, they put it in there. I Meaning the Masons who control the uh, movie industry, Hollywood, the same people who put coded hints about 9-11, 20 years before they pull it off in the Die Hard movie, the Always movie, uh, and other movies. They also put in some other stuff that's not, there's probably foreshadowing of future events or events that have transpired, events that have transpired since the release of the movie, uh, possibly, there's probably actually and maybe some things in there about the future plans that's not what I'm looking at in this viewing session if that was a guitar they would be making noises when they move the body that's actually a matrix pattern if you have that grid pattern with cubes and uh, crosses, you, that is, uh, you can call that a matrix pattern. It's a matrix. Sometimes if you Google search something and like copyright free on the Google image search, uh, you'll see these vector or whatever things that have this matrix around them, uh, gray and white a lot of time. And it's called a matrix, that pattern. I'm pretty sure, a matrix pattern. So that's actually a matrix pattern. They're play fighting now. Yes, and it, and it's a, it's a free for all. It's not one on one. It's it's three. 
and it looks yes. like the, it's every man for every cat for himself. It doesn't look like they're teaming up against one yes. of the other cats. It's every it's cat for right himself. And two birds. Yeah. He has side control. Almost okay. He's, <laughs> he's trying to sweep the leg. <laughs> he's trying to sweep his leg. He couldn't do it. He got away. That cat was in Gord. It goes back to Gord. See, he's in Gord. This is, these are wrestling like moves now. And have this one time. It's fascinating. It's oh. fascinating to me to see them play like that. I'm the cat Joe Rogan right now. I'm, I'm doing color commentary on the cat fight here. He got his back. <laughs> he's, go he's going for his back. He doesn't have it fully, but... Yeah. Cats don't use submissions like chokeholds. In the wild, tigers, like the father of cats and lions, they do use chokeholds to kill prey by biting the neck of the animal and clamping down and then maintaining the hold and uh, the animal will perish either from blood loss or from asphyxiation or a combination of both you have uh, major arteries in your neck animals too a lot of time that transport oxygenated mm -hmm. blood to the brain Some of the moves that they do remind me, that's why I was goofing about using some uh, words that you hear if you listen, if you watch UFC fights. He's in side control, he's got his back, because it's, uh, look at it, it, it's reminiscent of that. Like how they, some of the moves when they're fighting each other, play fighting. Sleeping. Sleeping. Uh-huh. Well, I don't think it's sleeping yet, it's just resting. I don't think it fell asleep that fast. You like to sleep? Yeah, I think it's resting. Sleep I don't think fast. it fell asleep that fast. I, I think sleep. And it's interesting enough, it's a trinity too. So it's three cats we're looking at. That's a cactus. Rook. Oh, bishop. He's a bishop. He is now positioned in a way where he's the piece that moves diagonally across the chessboard. If this would be a chessboard. Not a tower. But, but I, I, I'm second guessing myself if it's Rook or Bishop call it. The one, the piece that moves diagonally across the board. He is that right now. He's positioned himself at the edge of the board. Then his body is aimed diagonally down the line there. The diagonal line. And there's a cactus to the right. Oh, he got it. That's blocking his, his it's like he, he's in check because he's, he's at a cactus tip point okay. there. Yeah. But he can escape. He's sleeping. Down. Yeah. It's not sleeping. It, I, I highly doubt that he fell asleep in like three seconds. It's resting. If it stays like that, it might fall asleep. It's beginning to fall asleep, possibly. It's in the gradual process of uh, achieving a sleep state, I would say. If it would stay like that and there's no other cats playing with it or anything, you would turn off the lights and quiet down. Maybe you'll fall asleep like that. But right now, it's just. It's just feeling good, relaxing. That's very sweet. 
unless he's getting like micro sleep where he's, he falls asleep for five seconds or something like this. This is something called micro sleep. Then it can manifest in humans if you are sleep deprived for a long time. Your brain will kind of like turn off the lights for like a fraction of a second. If my memory serves me right. This is something called micro sleep. And in humans, I think it can manifest if uh, you're extremely sleep deprived. Like if you would stay up for like a week or something, and your brain will start like giving like just a second, like turning off for a second or something, or like a third of a second maybe. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure on that. Some things I'm sure about that would be something that I re vaguely remember. Did you know that a lot of the uh, certain candies, they make the coloring, some kind of a coloring of them, some ingredient in the candies that are, uh, they make them from insects that live on cactuses, cactus flowers. There's a Swedish candy, I think it's called Sue, and it's uh, this small little gelatin, reddish color, dark brown, brownish reddish colored candies. I used to love them. One of my favorite candies when I was a child. And they uh, they use this ingredient from cactus, like insects that live off on cactuses, as an ingredient in that. There's a lot of candies that contain insect. Uh, insect uh, juice. <laughs> okay. The, my brain is, sl is started to slide into Rain Man mode, where where the vast amount of rap god library inside of here that has been scanned and downloaded into my consciousness is starting to bleed out. It's in here, it, it, it doesn't always exit well. Yeah, but it might be cactus lice. Lice, like a certain lice or some kind of gnat or bug that lives on cactuses and they use them as ingredients in food. They form the uh, cactus bugs and use it as an ingredient in food. Like the, the, bug juice. They've normalized their consumption of a lot of weird ingredients in society. Sugar being one of them. And also other things. Some of which I don't even feel comfortable talking about with you. Because you might get a, a strike. Just this thing and that thing. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I watched a video recently about this actually, very recently, uh, where somebody was talking about uh, ingredients and some things, from aborted fetuses cells to uh, just something from aborted fetuses they put in some stuff, and this mercury and uh, different things. That, that this is like a good how, how it entered the the, uh, the camera there it, it was a good entrance that looks like hemp rope that I would guess that's hemp rope the rope on the cat uh, toy there cat tower you might call it it's hemp rope I think Can you put the camera up a little bit? Can you uh, put the camera up a little bit?
Yeah, there you go. So you have a cross there, you have wood, black and white, swords and thistles. Finish. I want to take Yeah, let's hour. finish up. Let's finish up. Okay. And uh, next time we do this, we'll do it at a time, early at time. This happens sometimes. We're busy all day. Working and taking care of cats and cooking and, and making crochet and this and that. And we will talk sometimes throughout the day, but a lot of times when she can make a live stream, join me for YouTube, will be towards the end of the day where she's finished everything. She uh, wanted to finish. I think it's better if we sometimes you join me when you're not uh, tired, when it's not the end of the day. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so there without excuse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. I'm quoting from memory, so if you would type in all these different verses I've been quoting into Google, you will find the actual verse, and I might have got a word or two wrong in there. Yeah. Okay, honey, you thanks for joining me today. What do you think about my uh, Muay Thai skills? Do you think they got it better? Did you see my training mm, yeah. video? You showed me before. Yeah, but did you? I think I sent you a link. Uh, did you see my latest training video? Mm, that a uh, little, not much. Okay. I did to see almost. When we live together, God willing, uh, you can hold pads mm -hmm. for me. We can train it with each other. Yeah. I, I hope I, I can continue when my home finished. Yeah. I don't know all the specifics about uh, how to go from where you are to me. You're gonna have to get a visa, you need to have a passport, I know that. You need a visa and a passport. Other than that, mm -hmm. I don't know. I've had around a thousand milligrams of caffeine since waking up. Mm. There's approximately mm. 50 milligrams of, of caffeine in a normal black cup of coffee. Normal strength. Average strength cup of coffee. Average. I think it's 50, 50, 40 to 75 or something like this. Around 50. That's not for something else you can develop okay. towards there. Finish yet. Okay, I babe, let's finish up. Okay. Yeah, let's finish up. I can call your messenger before you go to bed and, and talk to you in virtually and say goodnight to you. Okay. <clears throat> if you're out there, you're watching this, you're not a Christian, you want to become one. Read Romans chapter 1 to 4 in the King James Bible. And uh, 1 core 53 to 4 as well. I have a link in the description to most of my videos, live streams. Well, most live streams, most recent live streams, this says salvation. This uh, all capitalated word, salvation, this link on it, you click it, it takes you to the King James Bible with pre selected verses. I've prepared all the verses you need to believe to become a Christian. Uh, and it, it's not that if you extract one of these, 
like Acts 16, 30, 31, you don't have to believe that to become a Christian. The verses specifically that you trust in become a Christian, Romans 3, 23, 28, and 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. I think it's suboptimal to uh, give only 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. You should add Romans 3, 23 to 28 as well. I'm not saying it's impossible for something to get saved from uh, only 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, but I, I, I don't like giving only 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. It's suboptimal at best. Okay, let's finish up, babe, and maybe you can join me sometime in the future, near future. Yes. Okay, babe. Good night. Good night, babe. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay, okay, so there's me. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Mike Sat 2.0, I recommend you subscribe to Mike Sat 2.0. If you're watching this on the Mike Sat channel, subscribe to Mike Sat 2.0, Optimally 3.0 as well. If you want to make sure that you can watch my future content, because uh, this channel might go down. Okay, the Mike Sat channel might go down. But as long as I want to be on YouTube, I'm going to be on YouTube. Yeah. And, uh, A Cairo adjustment. I like this one. There you go. All right. So that's gonna be the uh, end of the live stream. I'm gonna put this up. It's added this. Hold on. It's added this. Or this. That's a choice that every person has to make between this. And this. Let's go to the live stream. Goodbye.